Hello and welcome to this special Engineering Outreach Edition, Part 2 of the Art of Engineering Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Harden, with Michael Baker International, and also chair of the ASC Orange County Branch Structural Engineering Institute. You can visit us online at www.taepodcast.com. This show explores the evolution of a career in engineering and also promotes engineering outreach and science, technology, engineering, art, and math, or STEM, in schools. To further discuss engineering outreach, we have Susan Mahalski, bridge engineer with Michael Baker International. Welcome, Susie. Thank you for having me. Right. So, uh, you're a bridge engineer. I am. Tell us a little bit about your background. I, I will do so. Um, I have about 16 years of bridge design experience, transportation structures, uh, Bridges, mostly my favorite, retaining walls, drainage structures, things of of that sort. Um, And now where'd you go to school? I went to Purdue University in Indiana. And what kind of a school is that, like culture-wise? It's a very Midwestern meat and potatoes kind of (laughs) school. It's it's an agricultural and engineering-based school, so a lot of science. Okay. A lot of agriculture, a lot of um, farm majors. I didn't know oh. you could major in agriculture to be a farmer, but you could. Okay. Um, a lot of science. You know, not as there was art. There was art programs, but it was very much a science-based so, school. So UC Davis, um, I visited, and they have a big agricultural uh, division, and then also a lot of geotechnical engineers. So was there yeah. a lot of big geotechnical focus at Purdue? It was, yeah. Okay. I'd say... Well, within civil engineering, it was very, that was one of the more, I think, structures in geotechnical okay. and maybe like construction. I wonder if that's stronger at schools where they have agriculture. I, it makes I sense wonder. to me because of soil, right? It and does make sense. It does. It like it would attract more of that crossover. And well, they, they were, I would, I will say that their agricultural engineering program was particularly popular now okay. that I think of it. So no, I'm sure there are, there is an agricultural um Discipline, mm-hmm. but the ag engineering, they had fraternities for oh, wow. it. It was it, now that I'm recalling. Okay, it was it was very big at the school. Wow. So, um, and it probably did have a lot to do with soil. Right, right. I took what I could, and then I moved on to structures. Okay, <laughs> in my discipline. Well, um, let's see what else related to that. Um, did you did you look around at different colleges, or how did you decide to go there? I decided to go there. Um, not related to engineering. I went there because my mother went there and my father went oh, okay. there and my sister went there. And, oh, that's cool. Um, to backtrack a little bit, I wanted to go into architecture. Okay. And because it was not an art-based school, they did not offer architecture at Purdue. Okay. And I scrambled my junior and senior year of high school to go there and to find something that applied. And okay. I, I met a woman through my sister uh, she was a, a senior and graduating at the time I was a junior in high school and she was in civil engineering okay. and, you know, we joked it was the smarter person's version of <laughs> architecture, you know, okay, okay. the artists, you know, they are the artists, they tell you they want to build and then the engineers tell you if you can actually do it. Okay. That's how I looked at it. And I thought, I like that. I'm, I feel more confident in math and science than mm. I did in art and creativity okay. um, and design. Right. Even though I enjoyed it. Right. So it was, it ended up being a good fit. You know, it's funny because when I was a kid, I wanted to be an architect as well. At some yeah. point, I mean, I also wanted to be like a comedian too. So, <laughs> you know, but at some point I wanted to be an architect. And I wonder if um, architect architecture maybe has more visibility as a field. I wonder. And then you yeah. get, you know, later on in it, if you're stronger, maybe in science and yeah. math, maybe you gravitate to the civil engineering. I think so. I think especially back when we were younger, architecture had much more of a visibility. Right. I think nobody knew what engineers were. Right. Um, I'd always, I'd seen a talk where, you know, what do you think an engineer is? A mm. person that drives a train. Mm-hmm. And that's what I thought. Right. Um, so I had no idea. We should have an architect on the show. We should. Kind of learn more I would, about I that. would like to be a I would like to know that. more about how they start out doing building design or, you know, right. laying out a site for landscape architecture, you know, yeah. there's so many, so many different avenues. Yeah. Right. It was the landscape architects. They would have class outside. Oh, this right. Is kind right. of off a tangent. 
but they <laughs> they labeled a lot of trees and things on campus. Okay. Um, because it's nice and lush in the Midwest, and you would see classes going around and observing the different. Okay. You know, plants and flowers cool. and trees and things like that, and I thought. I think if I don't make it as yeah <laughs> an engineer, maybe I could be a landscape architect. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I started out in environmental engineering, and we had class oh, outside. And then uh, I got Just... to organic chemistry, and I found out I didn't like chemistry <laughs> as much as I like engineering. So that's how I ended up. I heard up. that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> I heard yeah. that was very <laughs> tough. <laughs> well, recently you did outreach, engineer, some engineering outreach for, uh, it's a, Girls Engineering Day. Yes. And that was before, before Engineering Week. I think there was a Civil Engineering yeah, Week. Yeah, a week right. or two before that, right. I think. And that was, uh, you said, was sponsored by WTS, which is what? Yes, Women in Transportation Services. Okay. So how did that go? You had a presentation, and then you did some hands-on model building, right? Yes. So it was uh, a, 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 an all-day event where girls okay. would arrive and register and have some breakfast and meet in you know middle school cafeteria and kind of get situated they started off with a fun little warm-up and then the girls got to into their groups and then moved on and what they moved on to was over the course of the day five different groups or five different classrooms Mm -hmm. and they got to choose five out of seven that were provided and they were geotechnical engineering Surveying, bridges, roadway, traffic. I'm, I'm missing a couple more. I apologize. But essentially, they were all transportation engineering related. Okay. And so they went for 30 minutes to each session and they learned it was kind of the same structure for each one. So we gave a very short background. We would do an activity and then we talk about kind of your education mm-hmm. and what is involved in a career more than just being an engineer, you know, what right. kind of, you know, tasks are involved and what kind of qualities they're looking for in, in, in mm-hmm. that specific field. So in ours, we talked about that and our activity was uh, rather tricky, but it was a spaghetti challenge where the girls were given a number, I think five sticks of spaghetti, a marshmallow, tape and string and mm-hmm. they needed to create as large of a structure freestanding as they could okay and they had to balance a marshmallow at the top oh wow so it was it proved to be and they could break up the spaghetti they could right use the tape and the string however they needed to oh. and it was a challenge to do it in a we kind of shrunk the time a little bit but mm. um off the example that we were given and that was a little hard for them right but so but it went well, and I think they, and I kind of, as we went along the day, I kind of embedded a little bit of nuggets of information uh-huh. to get them to start off, you know, kind of create a base with a triangle or a square right. to kind of get them thinking about shapes and math and how, you know, those work for you in strength to build higher off of there. Yeah. So they were just trying to create an Eiffel Tower kind of look and hope for the best. Cool. When it was finally, yeah. when time was called, but some of them as they went along and I gave out little t- nuggets, they grasped onto that and they understood. So it was, oh. it was neat to see. They, they, and did they all do it. the same, like similar construction types or did they do some, some groups did something kind of radical or? Um, no, they generally did similar things. Okay. It was either a triangle or kind of squ- a cube to a degree that okay. kept going up. Okay. So it was, they, yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary. And did, uh, did you get a chance good. to like interact with them like one-on-one sometimes? Did they ask questions? They could ask questions. They didn't ask very many questions during the activity. Although I tried, we all tried to go around and just be there right. for them to say something or say, Hey, you can do it this way. Don't, mm. you know, break this, the spaghetti, try it this way. And, yeah. but they could, they could ask questions during our talk as well. And we tried to ask, we kind of prompted with questions okay. for me to get them to ask more. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Right. But, uh, they, they did. They, a couple girls asked, um, you know, about the college classes we took okay. and, um, a little bit about, you know, what we mentioned is kind of what your skills needed to be mm-hmm. in the career, which was good too. So I, th- I think they kind of okay. understood. 
Yeah. But you kind of wish you had more time right. to talk about, you know, the basics behind, you know, the activity we did, things mm. like that. Right. You wish you could have more time, but. Sure. You got, you get what you get. It went, it worked, it, it went well. I think they liked it. Good. Good. Yeah, it was good. Well, um, let's see. What do you, what do you enjoy about your area of expertise, the bridge engineering? What is, what do you enjoy and what's the most challenging? What's the most challenging? I think I'll start with the most challenging. Because I feel like I face it a lot. I think that it's different all the time. Mm. It's con- There's constant challenges that come up right. every day. And I still feel like I'm learning how to be a better problem solver. Mm. And I, I, when I highlighted the skills of an engineer, that was my biggest skill okay. um, that I gave to the girls. Because I said, if you like to solve problems, okay. this is the field for you. And I think all of engineering is right. that way. Um, but it, it's, you know, you kind of get thrown all sorts of stuff all the time. And even though I've built or designed, you know, a dozen bridges, let's say, mm-hmm. or more, each one was different. Right. And, <laughs> you know, people are like, it's just a bridge. It's, it is not just a bridge. Right. <laughs> right. For sure. So that was, I'd say that's the challenge about it. What I like about it too, though, is I, I like the details in it. I like the math that I do. I, Mm. you know, I like, you know, that little bit of design where you feel like you're creating Mm -hmm. and you're, and I do like some of the problem solving involved in it, but, um, I sure do love trigonometry and geometry. And when we get to do that and, and I do really like CAD and I, you get to do a lot of that when you're kind of building your little model of your, your bridge. I like that the most. There is something satisfying about coming up with a like a geometric solution. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. I mean, the form of it, right? Yes. Um, That's... Sometimes there's mm-hmm. certain variables, and those are your constraints. Like, you know, a footing has to fit within this space. And then yeah. coming up with a form that you know is going to work, but you're still creating it. Yes. Right? I, I, I enjoy that very much. Y- you know, you can prove theorems and things like that and be very conceptual mm-hmm. about design and that's great but i like solving problems similarly like that geometrically that's one of the things i've been um exploring with this podcast in Mm -hmm. a way is an idea and i I haven't really been able to articulate it but (laughs) i'm kind of sensing it too like with different engineers is um the idea that the the process of engineering it becomes an art and and it's almost um it's it's almost as important as the final product in, in yeah. terms of an artistic sense, mm-hmm. you know, like, like an artist paints something mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, you know, just a real simple, um, example would be they have a painting, right? At the end yeah. of the day, but maybe more important than that as the art is, is the process of painting it. Yes. Like the experience of painting it for the artist is, is maybe more, uh, appreciated by the artist than then... the painting. Somebody else might appreciate the painting. Right. But like the two things are, are the two, the, the, the painting itself. And the process of painting it, I think, are two pieces of art. Right. Just as important. I totally agree. And for engineering, I think we do a set of plans or we have mm-hmm. a binder of calculations mm-hmm. at the end of the day. And those are those are important, obviously, because we get paid to do that. Mm-hmm. And those have to be safe and meet all these code requirements. Yeah. And then somebody the builds a bridge <laughs> with it, you know. Um, but the to, to me, like, it's almost like an feels like it's starting to be like an art where I'm appreciating that process, and that's for me is is enjoyable mm-hmm. as an as an art. But mm-hmm. It's hard to say. Like the process is is a is is, is art, mm-hmm. and then you make something which is also a piece of art, right? But they're both pieces of art. Right. One's tangible and one's not. Right. And yeah. And even the same thing with plan. You know, drawings on plans mm-hmm. or in CAD versus like what's actually built. Like I think. Right. It, you know. It, it's seen differently to me as well. Mm. I look at it and I think this is great on plans. And then I go out on the field and I think, it's the same thing, but I'm like, this is even better because or it's <laughs> even different. It's different to me. Right. Even though it's the same thing, it's different in a different form. Right. Yeah. It's, I don't know what that's called. I don't there's, know. there's process <laughs> art, which is like the experience of doing art or something like there's a definition for it. I don't think what I'm saying is quite the same. So I don't know. I'd I'd like to find out if there's more people exploring that idea too. Well, yeah. And I think too, like you said, the, the, if, you know, let's say it's a painting, 
I, you know, I've heard that it takes artists sometimes, you know, years to paint something right to one thing mm. because there's layers of paint on top of one another and they have to, you know, right. process the whole thing. And same with writing a song, you know, if you're a musician and I was at a concert recently where they played an album mm-hmm. from beginning to end and the singer, the lead singer said, we don't care about this at all. We don't care about the order. Mm. In fact, we think it's strange because it was a very old album. It was 10 years old. Okay. <laughs> and they didn't really remember the order of the songs, but everybody in the audience remembered the order of songs. Sure. And it meant something to us uh-huh. as a listener. Okay. Or, you know, <laughs> it did not mean the same to them. I'm sure when they wrote that song, it meant a lot. Right. And then just playing it was fine for them. It mm. Maybe it would evoke some emotions of back what ever they were writing it about. But I thought that was interesting because just like you said, for the artist and then, you know, the, the person appreciating the art. It two different two things. Two different things. Right. Which is interesting. Yeah. I remember thinking, gosh, I've never heard a musician say that ever right. before. Um, but because it, it was, they're like, well, people request these, you know, playing a whole album. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do it. I don't know why you guys want us to do it, but we're gonna. <laughs> and so <laughs> right. it was... But I loved it. It was great to know the next song that was coming. Right. Because right. you'd listen if I would listen to the album from beginning to end, the whole album was like an experience for me. I read this article once, I think, about um, the brainwaves when you are listening to a CD that you've heard before mm-hmm. or maybe many times is very different than when you hear the music for the first time. Oh, I bet. Because you and then because you're anticipating the next song and you know what's coming, mm-hmm. then you. Um, I guess your brain get I don't know, your brain gets used to it. And so then you can appreciate it more because you're now, you're not, you, you, you know what's coming so you can listen for more other things. You right. can pay attention to other things. other things. And I think that's why people like the order. It's true. Maybe. And I don't enjoy albums when they are very like haphazard or oh, right. the songs don't flow well together. I love a CD that has a continuous theme through the, through the whole mm-hmm. thing. Like, um, like Coldplay. They're, mm-hmm. the Milo's, They're very good at that. Milo's I Loto. It's like a yes. continuous theme. Every song has like similar, some like they build on the theme, you know, and like right. similar words or colors and, um, yes. uh, notes or, you know, little, little riffs. Um, and I love that when it's, when it's like a whole, the whole seat, the whole, compilation is they're thinking about it not just right. one-offs you know every right. song and that's like the difference between like a master artist and maybe a beginner you know <laughs> absolutely I absolutely definitely appreciate that there's this is even further off the subject there's a guy i listened to 100 point through the sound and once in a while they have a guy come in that breaks down a song oh really he breaks down all the pieces the guitar the drums the bass line mm. and other elements to it and it's fascinating to yeah. like you can appre- like just to appreciate a sound you've never like you hear the drums in Hotel California, but to hear it on its own was crazy. Uh, and really? then they matched that with the bass line and it sounded like a reggae song. Oh really? Not even joking. And then <laughs> like just hearing the the guitars because there's so many guitars that overlap each other, it was amazing. So right. it's it's crazy. Oh, yeah, that's cool. You know, even the process of just putting pieces together in a, in a song, it makes you appreciate right. the musicians for how really artistic and right amazing they really are. It, you take it for granted when you just hear a song and it's right. mixed together. You're like, great. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of work that went into that song or that piece of art or painting. Well, we may have answered the next question I had okay. was, what's your favorite work of art or type of art in your own oh. life? That's good. I my favorite class in college was art appreciation. Okay. Other than CAD, <laughs> I hate to admit, no structures classes. I liked them, um, but my favorite class was an art appreciation class, and okay. we learned from like the beginning of time to mm-hmm. very modern pieces. And although I enjoy, I enjoy art. Um, I heard, you know impressionist art, mm. Van Gogh, things like that. You know, kind of popular artists. Um, but I really love architecture. I really love photography. Okay. Um, I think that it's hard to just pick one. What do you, what do you photograph? Like something, is it a constant theme or do you just, just no. whatever strikes you? No, usually it's, I try to just take better pictures of my children. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, events I'm at, things like that. But 
I feel like when I look at other photographers' pictures, the ones that I love the most tell a story without really telling a story. Mm. Um, you know, I, I look at a lot of family, you know, photographers, and it's kind of, uh, they have a name for it, and it's escaping me, but it's kind of, um, they're capturing your daily life. They're mm. not, it's not a portrait. All right, like candid. Where everyone's, it's very candid, like they're mm. in your home, and they're capturing your daily life, and I okay. think... Wow. Recently, that's kind of what struck me as something I'd like to be able to do. So, so somebody like follows, like yeah. shadows you for yeah. a day or they a like week? like shadow you in your home. Oh, wow. Like if you're washing the dishes with your child, but they capture it so, the right. mundane, right. so beautifully. And that's awesome. I think that's what you remember <laughs> is your everyday, cool. yeah. is your, it, it is your everyday life. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, um, one, it, yeah, it's fa- so it's fascinating to me. I think I I've probably progressed through a many different favorites here. But oh, I'd that's say great. probably f- photography is. I do. I, I do love wish, like when you have kids and and you're 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 somewhere. I do feel like I wish I had a camera on my shoulder that I didn't have right. to think about because I know when you when you're like, oh, they're having so much fun. Let's go take a picture. It's like mm-hmm. it breaks it up mm-hmm. a little it's bit. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, I I would try and just. You know, I I have my good, my bad moments. I'm kind of like on a downward moment right now, not really taking many pictures. Oh, yeah. And more just trying to experience the things with my kids because they get tired of the constant pictures. But I try to, yeah. But if I take pictures without them really knowing of the the daily stuff, you know, my... I tried to do it last Christmas when my in-laws are in town because they do not like pictures. Okay. And I would sit in the kitchen while they were playing games at our table, the kitchen table with the kids. They were playing card games. And, like, that picture of them with the boys mm. was, is one of my favorite pictures because they don't know what's happening. But that's how they'll right. remember their grandparents. Right. You know, playing cards with them as right. kids. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, not, yeah. like, taking a portrait. Right. You know, all dressed up and stiff. Right. So. Right. Oh, that's great. You know, anyway, that's, you know, I kind of focus on my kids right now, but, mm-hmm. you know, I think sure. I'm sure change, yeah. I, you know, landscape, architecture, all that photography is right. neat. But I like ones that create an emotion mm-hmm. in you. I'd love to be able to do that mm-hmm. for, you know, in my own work, but right. you know, I have a nice. regular day job <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that I like very much too. Well, I, I have some uh, questions from sure. from students. Sure. If that's okay, and you haven't seen these before, I so have not. Gonna throw these <laughs> throw these at you. Uh, this is a good one. Do you have to go to a special school to become an engineer? So yeah. these are elementary school. Yeah, kids. I yeah. mean, without getting into the nitty gritty of it, um, I, I, you know, when I learned about Purdue being an agriculture and engineering school, I realized that state schools, especially in the Midwest, they have a liberal arts school and they have an agriculture and engineering mm-hmm. school. So. In some regards, yes, there's a special school you go to, but right. um, I'm sure, you know, to make it easy on everybody, you know, not necessarily you just have to study special yeah. classes. You have to take particular classes to be an engineer. This is a good one. That's a good question. Has a bridge ever broke when you were working on it? No. I haven't heard of any bridges breaking while they were being built. You know, there recent. was one recently. Okay. <laughs> I, on the 91. Uh huh. What happened? I think the false work fell oh, or yeah. collapsed. Right, right. But that is so rare. That's very, very rare. Right. That's that happened. extremely rare. Yeah. I think it caught on fire. Oh, that's right. That's what happened. With someone's tool, I oh, think is what okay. it was. But yeah, don't worry. <laughs> this is a question I think you'll enjoy. Do you ever have a bridge just for looks? Ooh, have we ever had a bridge just for looks? I think that, I don't know if I've ever had a bridge just for looks. Not any work I've done, but I mean, I think we've had bridges look pretty Mm -hmm. for no particular reason. Right, right. (laughs) Um, We're working on a bridge right now for the city of Tustin where it's a very standard bridge, but they really wanted to create a a monument entering into this particular part of the city. 
and you know they love the look of a cable stayed bridge but they didn't have the budget for it or the, mm-hmm. the money for it so we created kind of a arched with cables look separate from the bridge itself but still attached to the foundation um you know so it was you know it had a little bit nicer of an element to it a nice right. aesthetic look to it without breaking the bank <laughs> but that it was no mean feat either i mean no it that, was very it's difficult very complicated right? that was a complicated design right i did not i cannot take credit for that <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do engineers build earthquake proof bridges oh we have seismic design criteria you know just like we have codes for other you know parts of design we we definitely we we talk to soils engineers they let us know what faults are nearby and you know they give us criteria to work from and we you know simply enough just try and stay within the limits they right we're given in the code and the geotech gives us yeah I like I'm sure this. kids in California think that about that a lot more than right in other parts of the, the country. Right. Well, so, you know, what's uh, in the news, you know, I think right. in our area, obviously, earthquakes come up and in other areas, it's tornadoes or other right. other natural hazards, right? Well, I, and they were having earthquakes in Oklahoma with all the drilling for oil that they've been doing. Right. And I'd be more scared there <laughs> than here. They don't have as much code as this we is, do. This is a cute question. When you build a bridge, do you mostly use division? <laughs> Ooh. Maybe we could say what what kind of math do you use the most? What kind of math do we use the most? Probably. Well, I'm sure we do use a lot of multiplication and division. Mm-hmm. Um, that's for sure. Uh, but probably, you know, also a lot of trigonometry and geometry as well. Right. You can get into calculus and right. more trickier math right um but geometry know. being uh yeah. basically the study of shapes for yeah those who are shapes young yeah. listeners <laughs> Learn, in learning yeah angles things like that right i'm looking for just one more question okay. here do you know what the biggest bridge is Ooh. i do not well i know I know there's a very long bridge. It's 20 miles long. Oh, what is it? My son has a book about bridges. It's a... It's Lake Pontchartrain. Is that in Louisiana? I, I don't know about the world. Okay. But this is, it's right. over Lake Pontchartrain. I, I think that's in the south. And it's 20 I miles? I think it's 20 miles long. Holy it's cow. one of those... Um, it's a beam bridge. It's... I believe so. Now I'm going to go home and look right, for right. it. But... It's- Again, it the book is old, so there could be longer bridges than right. that. But it's it's yeah, it might be that as far as I know. Do you know? <laughs> I I don't know. I, I should have looked up before we talk, started talking. Um, no, there's so many long bridges though. That, there know, are. I was just reading the uh, the Golden Gate Bridge is. Um, I think it's like two and a half kilometers. That's just that makes that's sense. A really long bridge. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, this if, is an interesting question. What is the shortest? well-known bridge the shortest well-known bridge i don't know i was thinking about this because i i I got to see the questions before yeah yeah um the two that i that came to mind there's one in venice i think it's the bridge of size which is a short one and it's kind of an arch shape and you see it a lot in movies that's true it's a more of an arch and it's um, i don't even know if it's made of stone or what the material is but it's it's a beautiful bridge Oh, yeah. Um, and then the other one, more recently, they're doing a 3D printed bridge in um, uh, Amsterdam. Are they really? And it's, it's a, uh, they have these machines and they, they're, they're building them from the support out and they're, it was in a magazine. Kind of like a segmental bridge? Well, it more like a cantilevering yeah. out towards the middle to two segments, I guess. Yeah, right, that's, right. that's, I think that's how they construct segmental bridges. Okay. Too. And that's crazy. But it's made of steel. So this thing is printing it with steel with 3d printers out from from say from the abutments towards the middle i think they're 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 That's doing crazy. it in this shop but they're gonna then yeah. bring them out but it's a short bridge because it's a pedestrian bridge yeah and it's over i, I don't think the canal is very long very wide, crossed, yeah but it's kind of a novel use Idea. of new new material or not i guess new 
methods of building. Of building. And with 3D printing, I think it's really cool. So That's really neat. I would like to learn more about 3D yeah. printing. Yeah. But I think um, that's where things are going is maybe 3D printing, you know, materials on site to very custom, you know, specifications. Or, yeah, yeah. Or maybe, uh, so it would be interesting. That would be interesting for sure. That's a tricky question. Well, thank you, Susie. I think uh, that was fun. I don't know. Thank we you. have I have a couple more questions here from students, but I think they're they're similar along the lines of, uh, you know, long what's the longest bridge Which and things. Shortest, so yeah. yeah, but that was fun. So thank you again for thank telling you. us about your uh, girls' engineering day and telling us about your kind of your uh, experience with engineering from college to to now. So thank you, thank you for having me. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, so you've been listening to the Art of Engineering podcast again. You can find us online at www.taepodcast.com Thanks a lot. Music for this podcast was made available under the Creative Commons license by Ben Sound. Music title Sunny at bensound.com.